Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anukulu. Now, researchers in Australia say they've developed a new type of gel that may be able to reverse some of the brain damage caused by Parkinson's disease. The hydrogel is made from natural amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins and can safely deliver stem cells to the brain. Scientists believe the process can restore damaged brain tissue and replace lost neurons by releasing a growth enabling protein called GDNF. By putting the stem cells into a gel, they are exposed to less stress when injected into the brain and are more gently and successfully integrated. The gel also offers hope for patients who've suffered from other neurological conditions such as strokes. Well, joining me now for more on this is Arise International Correspondent Faith Orr. Good to see you, Faith. Just tell us about this new development in Australia. How is it supposed to work? So the researchers in Australia do say they've managed to develop this gel that could radically transform the treatment of Parkinson's disease. Now, it is a hydrogel, as you said, they're made from natural amino acids, and these are the building blocks of proteins. Now, what essentially happens is that this gel can deliver replacement cells into parts of the brain which have been damaged by Parkinson's. Mm. And this allows for regeneration. So we know that Parkinson's affects nerve cells in the brain and that those are the ones that are responsible for body movement. It causes dopamine producing neurons to die. And this is what leads to symptoms that we're used to seeing, sort of body tremors, mm. slowness, stiffness, problems with balance. I mean, if we take one example of someone I'm sure most people are familiar with who had Parkinson's, um, the boxer Muhammad Ali. Yeah, of course. You know, he went from this giant of a man, you know, knocked out George Foreman during the rumble in the jungle, Sonny Liston on the floor at his feet. Mm. And he went from this man capable of all this physical power to you know, when he was carrying the Olympic flame, mm. shaking, struggling, eventually barely able to walk. And of course, it did kill him in the end. And that is a very sad and a very powerful demonstration of exactly what Parkinson's is capable of. Mm. And that's exactly the sort of damage that the researchers are hoping this gel will be able to reverse. Well, that's a very good example you gave there because it's really brought it alive. I mean, I can see, you know, just Muhammad Ali in, in my sort of um, my mind's eye now. So a process that can restore damaged tissue and replace lost neurons, which, as you said, affect patients with Parkinson's disease. How revolutionary is this development? So what's different about this is the way that it's being delivered to the brain. Mm. So by putting the stem cells into a gel, they are exposed to less stress, which means that they're more likely to survive being actually injected into the brain. Now, prior to going into the, the brain, the hydrogel is shaken and that turns it into a liquid mm. and then it's injected into the brain where it re-solidifies and sort of gets to work releasing uh, you know, a growth protein transferring stem cells into the brain. In Australia alone, there are 100,000 people who suffer from Parkinson's. As we know, it has absolutely no cure at the moment. So if this does work, mm. revolutionary isn't even the word to cover it. Absolutely, but, but for those of us who plod along when it comes to things like uh, medical science and all these technical terms, Parkinson's and things like strokes essentially impair parts of of the brain. So these stem cells would be instructed to create replacement neurons, basically. That's basically it. So scientists think that this process can restore damaged tissue, replace these lost neurons, mm. which are killed off when people have a stroke or when Parkinson's hits. And the same, it's the stem cells themselves that mm. are injected that are instructed to replace these neurons. And as you said, this can also help stroke patients because if you imagine a stroke, someone who has that, they end up with a bunch of dead cells. Mm. And that is what causes, you know, perhaps the droopiness in one side of the face, the loss of use in one arm, generally is confined to one side of the body. Mm. And that's because these cells no longer get any blood flow. Now, in terms of Parkinson's, again, it's the neurons that are effective and it's, it's a whole population that are lost. 
So by introducing these replacement cells, the scientists hope that the brain can then repair the cells that have been damaged. There's also an added advantage mm. to this gel that it could effectively protect the surrounding cells from any further damage. Very interesting. But of course, these are early results, aren't they? Um, encouraging though they might be. I mean, they've been successful in reversing symptoms related to Parkinson's disease in animals, but they're yet to undertake human trials. Yes, so scientists are encouraged. They say these early results are going well. Mm. In animal trials, the gel has been shown to successfully reverse the movement symptoms that are related to Parkinson's disease. Now, human trials are yet to take place, but they, you know, scientists are saying that things are looking very promising. Through the use of this gel, they've managed to demonstrate increased survival of these sort of grafted cells onto the animals, and it has restored movement in animals, and you know, the animal model of mm. Parkinson's disease. But obviously, they've still got to tick lots of boxes before it finally okay. comes, you know, close to us. And, and beyond uh, Parkinson's, you mentioned their scientists are saying that this radically transformative technology can also be used to treat other injuries. I understand even things like knee and shoulder, you know, injuries and that sort of thing. And, and you mentioned strokes as well. Yes, so that was slightly surprising to them. They thought it could be used to treat knees and shoulders. And again, this comes from results that they've seen in these animal trials, mm. where they've seen significant um, improvements in paw coordination in the animals and overall kind of motor function recovery. So this could be applied in things like sports science, where at the moment a professional athlete might be out for months at a time. You know, this a use of this could shorten that and also, you know, used in more serious cases too, mm. of course, just to speed up the process of healing of recovery to any of these injuries in knees and in shoulders. And of course, in a similar way with Parkinson's, it can help with stroke patients. Right. Uh, and obviously Parkinson's disease is a global problem which affects people in rich as well as poor countries. Is this hydrogel technology likely to be easy to manufacture on a mass scale and also cost effective? So this is the really good news. The scientists say that yes, this technology is very cost effective and very easy to mass manufacture. It's hoped the treatment could be soon made available in hospitals. Of course, it must first undergo clinical trials. Mm. They still need to check its safety, efficacy, have regulatory approval. Um, you know, all of these things take a little bit of time, although these processes have been speeded up recently because of coronavirus. So scientists are used to getting things done a little more quickly but they are hoping it can be available in the not too distant future. And of course, let's remember at the moment, there is no effective treatment. You know, mm. we see patients undergoing things like physiotherapy. So really, if this makes it into hospitals, it'll make a huge difference to patients with Parkinson's. Right, and of course, when we talk about the not very distant future, I mean, in medical, I mean, you, you, you made a good point there about the coronavirus vaccine, which was speeded up, but that was because it had become a pandemic and so many people were dying and nobody knew what to do about it. But this is not the same, is it? No, it's not the same as that. But I think it still has, you know, once one thing can be done quicker in the scientific community, mm. I think there has to be implications for that, that all of the red tape that held up so many things, you know, the turn back of documents, that sort of thing, because a lot of the time, you know, with the pandemic, we saw that vaccines, for instance, that took a decade, it turned out that most of that was actually submitting for funding mm. and, you know, filling out forms. So these things can be speeded up. And, you know, we're hoping that the scientific community can move a little bit quicker than they did in the past. OK, Faith, absolutely fascinating story. Thank you very much indeed for bringing that to us. Faith Orr, a RISE International correspondent, talking to me there about what could be a breakthrough in the treatment of Parkinson's disease.